Now, Black Hills Energy is asking the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission to change how that works and charge solar power customers for the energy they generate. Kettle Lands Angela Kennedy has been investigating the consequences that that may have on solar power in South Dakota. Solar power is growing in popularity, especially in the Black Hills. What we do have is a lot of sun. Um, we rival Southern California for sun days a year, actually. Um, we used to be called the Sunshine State. Solar advocates like sustainability builder Jared Cap believe that solar power is the way of the future. Because really what homeowners are saying is we want to build your power generation for you. Homeowners are spending thirty, fifty thousand dollars sometimes to provide power generation equipment and infrastructure that Black Hills Energy could leverage for their own use. And if actually if this grows big, we could actually create a free infrastructure for Black Hills Energy to continue to use in the future. Only now, Black Hills Energy is asking the Public Utilities Commission to allow it to charge solar powered customers for all the energy they use, even what they produce on their own system. So really, they're getting all that benefit, um, but not paying their fair share. And over time, those costs get shifted to other customers. We have a garden. It would be like the grocery store saying that we have to pay the grocery store for the vegetables that we pull out of our own garden because they've put in the infrastructure of the coolers and the distribution network, and we're shorting them on consumption. Coming up in tonight's investigation at 10, how solar power could go dark in South Dakota. We look into how this proposed tariff would work, its effect on solar power in the state, and what happened in other states when a similar policy was enacted. Plus, we hear more from Black Hills Energy about why they say it's needed now.